Good evening, everybody. As we're going to start our chorus singing, let's have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity to, to come to your presence and to praise you and worship you, Lord. Thank you for all the blessings that have bestowed us all through this week. Lord, as we're going to worship you, as we're going to praise you, Lord, let your presence be here, Lord. Fill us with your spirit. Touch our mouths and talents and let, it, let everything be for your glory, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. Amen. Good evening once again. As we're going to worship the Lord by singing some choruses, let us take a minute to concentrate on God's presence. All through this week, we might have gone through a lot of sorrows, a lot of challenges, a lot of problems. But let, let's take some time to concentrate on God. Let's keep all our problems aside. Let us trade our sorrows with the joy that God gives in His presence. When we praise Him with our spirits and our hearts, God fills our hearts with His presence. So, let's see, as we're going to sing this chorus, I'm trading my sorrows. Let's trade our sorrows. Let's trade our shame, everything, with the joy that God's going to give us today. It's chorus number four from the sheets given to you. joy of the Lord. We say yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord, amen. We say yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. We'll sing this for us again. I'm trailing my sorrows. I'm trailing my shame. For joy of the Lord I'm training my sickness I'm training my pain I'm laying them down For joy of the Lord We say yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord Yes Lord, yes Lord, yes, yes Lord Not abounded, struck down but not destroyed. I'm blessed beyond the curse, for His promise will endure. That joy is gonna be my strength. Though the sorrow may last for the night, His joy comes in the morning. And I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame. Joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for joy of the Lord. 
We'll continue to sing chorus number three, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. As in Isaiah chapter six, we see the angels worshiping the Lord saying, holy, holy, holy. Our God is so holy. So let's ask God to open our eyes to experience the holiness of God in his presence. We have a wonderful and powerful God, a God who can move the mountains, a God who can do great things in our life. So let's sing chorus number 12, Mighty to Save. A Savior, He can move the mountains, for my God is mighty to save.
have several problems in our life but our god is a great god that he can move every mountain in our life every challenge we face today everyone needs compassion love that's never failing let mercy fall on me everyone needs forgiveness the kindness of a savior the hope of nations Savior, He can move the mountains My God is mighty to save He is mighty to save Forever, author of salvation He rose and conquered the grave Jesus conquered the As the last chorus for the, for this evening, worship. Let us all stand and sing the chorus number six. I surrender.
everybody please stand up and let us let us surrender our hearts and minds to god I surrender I want to know you more I surrender I surrender God author of eternal light lead us in our worshiping this day that our lips may praise thee our lives may bless thee our meditations may glorify thee through Christ our lord amen
The scripture portion selected for this evening's meditation is taken from the Gospel account of St. John, 5th chapter, beginning from 14 to 18. I request Mrs. Roja Williams to read the portion for us. Good evening. The scripture portion for today is taken from the Gospel according to St. John, chapter 5, verses 14 to 18. John 5, 14 to 18. Afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a wrong thing come upon you. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. For this reason, the Jews persecute, persecuted Jesus and sought to kill him, because he has done these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, saying, My father has been working until now, and now I have been working. Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because he had not only broken the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal to God. May God bless this portion. As we are spending the 40 days of Lent, coming nearer to the Lord through our prayers and meditations, at this time, I request you all to join in prayer with a penitent heart so that we enjoy the fellowship of the Lord. Come nearer to us. Let's bow down our heads, praise Him and thank Him for all the good things He has done in our lives and also shedding His precious blood for us on the Calvary. O oh God, our Lord, our Master, our Creator, we thank you and praise you, O Lord, for bringing us this evening into thy sanctuary. We praise you, O Lord, for being with us throughout the week, guiding us through our difficulties, through temptations, through our weaknesses. When we call thee, Abba, Father, thou hast heard our prayers and answered them. Thou hast strengthened us, O Lord, we thank you and praise you. When we came to thy feet, O Lord, with a cry, you have heard it and answered our prayer, O Lord. You have filled in our needs, we praise you, O Lord. At this time, we specially pray for peace in the world. There is turmoil, O Lord. Give those people the right mind to be kind to their neighbors, to be loving their neighbors, O Lord. In the name of religion, there is destruction. O oh Lord, thou art a loving God. Let people realize that you are love, not hatred. O oh Lord, we come to thy presence, praising you, thanking you, O oh Lord, for all the good things that thou hast done in our lives. We thank you for the peace in our country. We thank you peace in our state. We thank you for the peace in our homes and in our hearts. We praise you, O Lord. All of it is because of thy presence in our lives. We thank you for the experience of redemption. We praise you, O Lord, for thy kindness and love that thou hast come down as a human being, putting on flesh. You have come unto the cross, O Lord, to shed thy precious blood as a ransom for our sins. As sinners, when we come to Thee, You have received us kindly, O Lord, with compassion. Through Your mercy, You have brought us through, cleansed us and made us righteous to be a member in Thy congregation, to be called Thy children after Thy name. At this time, we pray for all the elders of the church. We pray for all the families of this church, O Lord. We remember every infant. Give the parents the right mind to bring up these children in thy word from their childhood. O Lord, we pray for all the breadwinners of this congregation. We guide them and strengthen them, O Lord. Fill in the need of every home. Let there be thy peace 
in every home or lawn we pray for the sick and needy if there is anyone sitting here with a special need o lord we pray for them touch them and heal them o lord if there is anyone with a need hear their cry and answer their prayer o lord we pray for the leaders of our country give them wisdom to rule this country in the proper way we pray for the leaders of our state o lord we pray for our town and the people of our town thy voice was heard o lord through this town thy wo- thy word was spread and let that word speak to each and every soul o lord we pray for today's speaker mr andrew so lord fill him with thy spirit and speak through him to us o lord our god we pray for all the congregations of nellur town we pray for all the pastors and the evangelists o lord we pray for church in our country let there be the right understanding in the country among all the congregations to be called as church in india let all of them take the responsibility of coming to thy feet with praising thee o lord taking away all the man made divisions that thou art the lord and soul god we pray for our nation o lord at this time we pray for all congregations once again as people are coming nearer to thy feet o lord observing the land let them come nearer touch their souls o lord speak to them we, we praise you for our choir we pray praise you for all the members we commit ourselves into the hands in jesus name we pray amen good evening once again the caption for today's anthem is invitation and acceptance the title of the anthem is the nail scarred hand it's written and composed by bb mckinney and the anthem says like this have you failed in your plan of your storm tossed life place your hand in the nail scarred hand are you weary and worn from its toil and strife place your hand in the nail scarred hand he will keep to the end he is your dearest friend place your hand in the nail scarred hand Place your hand in the next 
God's hand Would you live in the light of His blessed word Place your hand in the name's God hand Place your hand in the name's God hand Place your hand in the name's God hand He will keep to the end He's your dearest friend Place your hand in the name's God hand He's your soul burdened down with its load of sin. Place your hand in the next good hand. Throw your heart open wide. Let the Savior in. Place your hand in the next good hand. Place your hand in the next good hand. I welcome you all to this evening's worship service. If there is anyone attending this service for the very first time, we commence our sing song at 6.30 p.m. and finish our worship by 8 o'clock. As long as you are in Nello Town, please make it this place as your place of worship. Speaker coming Sunday, 28th February 2016 will be Mr. G. Silas Sudhakar. And today's speaker is Mr. Andrews, a pastor who serves among tribal groups. He has already spoken to us from this pulpit. I thank him for accepting our invitation and coming to our place for, to give the word of God. <clears throat> I thank Mrs. Roja Williams for reading the scripture for us and also Mr. and Mrs. Kantaras Garu for being the ushers today. Choir practice will be on Friday at 7 p.m. Those that are interested in joining the choir, you are requested to contact our choir director, Director Mrs. Sarah Pravina. <coughs> Let's continue to worship the Lord by standing and singing hymn number 401, Savior like a shepherd lead us. Free. 
happy to be here with the church once again I would like to thank God first of all for giving me this privilege to come to the church and share the word of God next I would like to thank the church pastor and also the church congregation and the church elders for giving me this opportunity to speak the word of God and to share the love of God with the church. I would like to read out a quote in the morning when I was listening to the word of God. The speaker quoted a sentence. It is like this. It is nowhere related to the devotion today, but I would like to read out for you. Religion is nothing. Relationship with Jesus is everything. It makes some sense that religion is nothing. But it makes sense relationship with Jesus is everything. Where we come together in only one name. That is Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Before going to the message, I would like to have a small word of prayer. I would ask everyone to close your eyes and bow down our heads for a moment of prayer. Father in heaven, we come to your presence as we are here in your presence, O God. Thank you for the wonderful worship. And now, God, it is the time for the devotion. It is not me who is delivering the word, but it's you, O God, who is sharing the word with all of us. Anoint us, bless us with your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would like to illustrate a small story, a real story, which has happened in the year 2014, which has happened in the lives of Mare and her husband. They were a very happy family and rejoicing in the presence of God. But one day, one night, Mayor's husband, he was severely affected with stomach ache. He struggled for a week. Doctors were unable to find out what has happened to him and what would be the reason for his stomach ache. And finally, after seven days of time, they found it as pancreatic cancer. And they finalized that it is in the fourth stage and it is hard for him to live at least a year. But the hope in God made Mayor to stand firm in Lord Jesus Christ. She is sure that something is going to happen, take a turn. Some miracle is going to take in her husband's life. So she started praying for her husband for his healing. She shared this prayer, prayer request to the church, to the pastors, to her family friends, to her relatives. 
always started praying, praying. We don't know how many days it took for them to pray. But they were praying strictly, firmly. But then, after six months, the scannings proved that there is no pancreatic cancer in his stomach. Doctors were surprised how this could happen. How this has happened? Then she answered, it is only prayer. It is only the prayer what we pray, how we pray, and at times how we pray. Prayer makes us stand firm in Jesus Christ. And few other quotes I would like to share with you. That is, the faithful love of the Lord never ends. And also it says, His mercies never cease. He is our hope. He is our redeemer. And finally, I would like to say, believe in Him, we receive miracles. How many of you believe that we receive miracles? Great. And going to the message now, I would like to the verses has been already read for us. John chapter 5, 17th verse. Based on these verses, I would like to take verses from 1 to 9 that talks about a man who was invalid, who was paralyzed, who was unable to move, who was like a dead, dead man, but still he's living. He can't move anywhere. He can't talk either properly, but still he's living for 38 years. Everyone are aware of this message, but still God spoke to me with this message to share this devotion in the church. I'd like to give the title for this message as Unexpected Visit of Healer. Unexpected Healer of, Unexpected Visit of Healer. This has happened in the place called Bethesda. And in the first two verses, we can see about Bethesda, which comes from an Aramaic language, and also called as Bethsaida and Bethsaida, which means house of mercy. Bethesda means house of mercy. Well, in the first two verses, it is talking about the location where Jesus visited Jerusalem on one of the occasions again. So he was there. Jesus was there on one of the occasions which is going to take place in Jerusalem. On that occasion, Jesus is visiting an expected visit for the man who was invalid. And this place is called Sheep Gate. Well, it is said uh, in the book of Nehemiah, third chapter, one to two verses we can read out later. So, and it is surrounded by five, five porches or else five colonnades. I'd like to describe, di divide these verses into two parts, that is three and four, eight and nine. I would like to give a theme for the three and four verses is expected healing. It is an expected healing, the people who are around this Bethsaida pool. It is a pool where an angel comes down, tr trouble, stir the water. By the time it is stirred, the one who is dipped in the waters, they get cured, they get healing. Here it is not written, but a few other verses describes what happens in the pool. In the Bible it is not written well. Few other versions describes this. These invalid were waiting for the moving, traveling of the water. For an angel of the Lord went down at certain seasons into the pool and troubled the waters. This is expected, the people who are living, the people who are affected around the pool, this is expected. One or the other day, someday the angel would come and trouble the water. By the time, whoever dipped for the first time, whoever is the first, they get cured, they get healed. They're waiting for this angel, which is an expected visit. We don't know the time when the angel comes, but it is sure that 
the angel will come at any time. They were waiting around the pool. There were many people, thousands of them were there, who were paralyzed, who were lame, who were blind, with many other diseases. They were waiting for the angel to come and to trouble the waters. By the time the waters are troubled, they wanted to get deep in that. But there's a caution, but there's a caution. The one who comes first and get into the water, he is healed, but others are not healed. There's only a chance for one. One member can get in. One invalid can get cured, can be healed, but no others can. No others can be healed here. There we can see a person, an invalid person, who was paralyzed, not able to move properly, not able to talk properly. For 38 years long, he was waiting at the pool. He was waiting at the pool since from 38 years. To my knowledge, to my knowledge, the evidence is what made Jesus Christ lifetime living come to light says that even Jesus was not born at the time when he was affected with this disease. But this invalid was suffering with the disease since from 38 years. So he was waiting for the expected angel to trouble the water. There's an unexpected visit of the healer, that is Jesus Christ, who would come to him and heal him. He did not expect Jesus Christ in his life any time, never. But there's a miracle is going to take in his life and change his life, mold his life, give him a new life with his body moving perfectly, with his muscles firm, stand in God and be a testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. And the time has come, and the time has come. In the verses 8 to 9, I would like to read this. I would like to read this. Then Jesus said to him, get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. Before that, Jesus asked this invalid in the seventh verse, sir, and he replied, sir, the invalid replied, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in someone else goes down ahead of me. But there is someone who is going ahead of him and getting dipped in the water and getting healed. He didn't even get a single chance to get into the waters since from 38 years. But there's a person who is going to visit him. That is an unexpected visit of the healer that is Jesus Christ. Now we see in the verses 8 and 9, he talks about, do you want to get healed? You want to get transformed? Jesus is asking. You want to get transformed? Yes, Jesus has come to this world to transform us, to give us salvation, to mold our lives, to bring us to light. Here the same is taking place in the life of this invalid person. He's asking to get up, pick up your mat and walk. At once the man was cured. He picked up his mat and walked. What a wonderful miracle here. We didn't see with our naked eyes, but still we are witnessing because this is the word of God, which is true, which is true, truly happened in each one of our lives. We even received many blessings from God for which we give testimonies every Sunday or else wherever we gather, we testify God's works in us, God's miracles in us. Yes, that is the best time where we share the word of God, where we can bring souls to Him, where we can mold, where we can change other souls who doesn't believe God, who don't know God, but still, with a testimony, with our testimony, we can bring people, we can make souls to his work. And the next point, I would like to talk about, the same has happened in the life of 
a sick woman bleeding since from 12 years that is in the book of Luke that is the book of Luke the crowds Jesus was surrounded by huge crowds but still the woman had faith that Jesus would heal her heal her from the bleeding she has come to God she has come to Jesus Christ and touched his dress she got healed and Jesus says daughter your faith is has healed you go in peace Jesus is a peacemaker also it has happened in the life of a tax collector that is Zacchaeus in the book of Luke 19 chapter 1 to 10 you can read it it says who was so wealthy cheated people and he make money cheating people he decided to see God he decided to see Jesus Christ since Jesus Christ was coming to his town since he was shot he climbed a fig tree and decided to see Jesus Christ at the point Jesus has come under that fig tree and asked Zacchaeus please come down immediately I have to visit your house yes his heart was changed Zacchaeus was changed he became a good person and testified I would return the money four times ahead to the people who I cheated and now Jesus says Jesus says the salvation has come to this house the salvation has come to this house yes believe church it is he coming to us it is not we going to him believe that he is coming to us he has already come for us he's already made a great deal to bring us to light we should believe that he has saved us we should believe that he healed us same as like how an invalid person since from 30 years he was suffering the disease but still the visit was unexpected in his life the visit was unexpected in his life that Jesus Christ met him yes Jesus knows our weakness Jesus knows our paths where we are going and how weak we are but still he's asking us to reach him he's there for us he's calling us to come to him here it says in John chapter 14 I'd like to read out John chapter 14 sixth verse Jesus answered I am the way and the truth and the life no one comes to the Father except through me yes he is the way and he is the truth and he is the life no one comes to the Father except through me yes first we have to reach Jesus Christ if we have, if we ever desire to reach a father first we have to make a commitment with Jesus Christ that would be through prayers that is through prayers that we, if we pray same has happened in the life of Mary as I shared you as an illustration if we pray we get along with Jesus Christ where he makes a path for us to reach the father believe church we have to reach father first of all we should be healed we should get into light it is through only Jesus Christ and it says in the same verses I wanted to get back to the same verses fifth chapter 17th verse it says Jesus said to them my father is always at his work yes since from the Old Testament since from the ages since from the beginning of this entire world father was there he made the world he made the creation he made everything he's the creator he is the father of us all his work is even still now and the other word Jesus said is to this very day I and I too I'm working yes even today his works 
are in our lives. We should believe that. He's working in us. He's guiding us. He's guarding us each and every time. Each and every time. If, that, if we believe that, that grows our faith in Him, that brings salvation to each one of our lives. As we take an example of the invalid, as the message spoke to us already. As a church, we should believe no matter how many years, no matter what's the time, but God is calling us. God is asking us. God is giving us a helping hand to bring us out of our sufferings to the light. We should believe, church, that God is there for us. Nobody may, may sacrifice their lives, even our father, even our mother, or else our friends, our brothers or sisters. But he was the only one who sacrificed, who was crucified on the cross and made a strong bond between human and father. This is what Jesus has done to us. Even today, as the scripture says, his work is still in us working that we should take his take this work to the people to the unreached to the unreached and bring the souls to the light may god bless this devotion we'll have a little word of prayer as we close our eyes and bow down our heads prayer oh father god thank you for the wonderful time that you have given us to listen to have your word in each one of our hearts as a God this is the time where we have to change our lives this is the time where we have to get healed yes oh Jesus 38 long years the invalid was waiting at the expected pool but you visited him as an unexpected healer and healed him it was a great surprise in his life as so Jesus we believe in your works we believe in your works as the word says you are the way you're the truth. You're everything for us, Jesus. Thank you for the wonderful word that you have shared to all of us. May all live accordingly and bring your name higher and higher. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Take up thy bed and walk, said the Lord. 38 years of waiting with hope and faith. And when he met Jesus, Jesus healed him. Miracles happen in our lives and Lent is the period when our waiting will be answered. Whatever the sin, whatever the problem, if only we wait at the Lord with hope, God answers our prayers. He speaks to us. He heals us. I thank Mr. Andrews for the message he has brought us for this evening that awaiting at the feet of the Lord and looking to him in faith and hope. In closing, let's all stand and sing hymn number 294, Rock of Ages, Cleft for Me.
time you have given us to sit in thy tabernacle. We thank you for the time of hearing thy word, O Lord. Thou art a gracious Lord, coming to the people who are in need, who are awaiting with patience, with hope and faith. O Lord, as a congregation, we sit at thy feet, always looking to thee, O Lord. We thank you for the path of salvation that you have laid for us. We, have, we thank thee, O Lord, for speaking to us continuously through thy word, raising our souls to greater heights. O Lord, at this time we come to thy presence once again, seeking thy guidance as we prepare to go to homes. Be with us and guide us throughout the week to that is ahead. We commit ourselves into thy hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May the love of God, the grace of the Son, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen.